Good morning and welcome to our live broadcast at First Presbyterian Church. It is a joy to come into your home today with good news about God who loves you. We are located in beautiful Uptown Columbus on the corner of 11th and 1st. We would love for you to join us for worship or just stop by and say hello. At First Presbyterian Church, we welcome you with grace and gratitude for God's love. Good morning. First, I'd like to start by saying thank you to those worshiping with us today, whether it be members, visitors, or those worshiping with us from the comfort of their homes. We are doing announcements a little differently today. Let's take a moment to fill out the friendship pads that are at the end of the rows and greet those around us. Before I tell you what I've been doing in the youth group, I would like to welcome Pastor Danny to recognize our graduating seniors. Uh, 
A joy to see all of you this morning, and what an exciting day in the life of our church it is. Uh, I want to go ahead and say thank you to all of our amazing youth uh, who did a great job at the first service, uh, and you are in for a treat. Uh, so thank you to the youth. Uh, Chris, Kimberly, Tom, everybody else who has helped put this together. Um, it's a great morning of worship. Um, I have the honor of very quickly just um, calling your attention to the insert where we have four seniors that are graduating. Um, their names are Henry McCarran, Caleb McLeod, Benjamin Sellers, and Elise Sway. Um, and we have, uh, we will send them off with our love, with our prayers, and a brand new new Bible to go out into their next chapter. So um, Ben, I know Ben's here. I'd like to welcome you down. Congratulations. <laughs> Once wait, stay. Anybody else here in that crew? I will give Henry's Thanks. to Debbie. Yep. Um, and let's have a prayer together. Lord God, we are so thankful and excited about these graduating seniors that are stepping out into the next chapter of their life, the life that you have equipped them to, this path that you have called them to walk along with you side by side. We hope that you will always be with them and bless them. Let them always feel your presence. Let them know that this is their home and they will always be welcome and a part of this church family and no matter where they roam or where they go, help them to know that your spirit is with them every second of every day. Go with them, Lord. Hold them and love them. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Congrats. Ben, we'll call you back up. The First Presbyterian Youth Program has accomplished many tasks and missions, one of which was cleaning an elderly woman's home. Her name is Mahalia. Mahalia's home had turned into disarray after the passing of her son, Christopher. Many rooms were stacked high with trash and Chris's belongings. When we cleaned Mahalia's home, we went through more than 10 years of books, documents, clothes, and trash. At first, this task seemed unthinkable and excruciating, but as we worked, I began to feel a sense of accomplishment. After this experience, I knew what it meant to give up one's own time and to surrender myself to God's calling on my heart and to serve as Jesus did. Serve as projects at First Presbyterian Church are a way to share hope and God's love to our community. Thank you. First Presbyterian's youth group has also reached out to others like Mahalia. Among all of the projects, my favorite was when we provided Eugene Dubois with Thanksgiving dinner. He assisted the youth group with our first service project at the safe house. Eugene used to be homeless and on the streets. He knew that he wanted something more in his life. He realized the surpassing power of Jesus Christ and what it meant to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. He turned his life around and is now a manager at the safe house and works there full time. He has had numerous opportunities to take other jobs that pay more and give him more hours of work, but he says he feels a calling from God to serve the homeless population, a population he has so recently been a part of. Getting the opportunity to meet people like Eugene shows me just what God can do in people's lives when they choose to follow him. Eugene is a testament to the saying, you only live once. Christ is risen. <laughs> Please join me in the unison call to worship, James 2, 1 through 4. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, we must not show favoritism, 
Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you. To say to the poor man, You stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? The God revealed to us in the pages, in the pages of, it, of this scripture is a welcoming and exclusive God who directs us to love one another. We seek to remove all barriers that keeps us from that love. Come now to confess all that separates you from others and from God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty, gracious, and loving God, hear our prayers of confession. For those times we have not accepted others into our body, Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. For those times we have held back and not helped other people grow in their faith. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. For those times we have not shown proper care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. For those times when we have walked by those being in need, when we have ignored those with special needs, Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. For those times when we have given into our worries and failed to trust you, Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may open our arms in hospitality. Open our arms in encouragement. Open our arms to care for your creation. Open our arms to meet the needs of others. And open the arms of the faith that we need trust in you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that our sins are forgiven.
morning, kids. My name is Ella. And I'm Alex. And I'm Ada. Have you guys ever heard of the term YOLO? It means you only live once. Wow, what a mind-blowing phrase that is. Think about it. We only live once. So what do y'all think that God wants to do if we only live once? Good one. Anyone else? Well, one time I was on the way home from school, and me and my mom, we stopped to give food to a homeless man, and that's a good example. One time I was at school, and Ella forgot her lunch, so I gave her mine because she was hungry. <laughs> one time I volunteered at the safe house. <laughs> now that we've told you guys a couple of things we've done, what are some things you guys have done to help others? That's really nice. How about you? Yeah, that's a good one. Play with your friends. Harrison? That's nice. Okay. All right. There's also other stuff you could do, like maybe if you have someone in your class that doesn't have very many friends, you could invite them to sit with you at lunch or play with them on the playground, right? All right. We're going to wrap it up with a prayer. Please bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the many gifts you have given me. Thank you for the many gifts you've given me. Help me. Help me to share your love to others. Share your love to others. Just as you have done for me. Just as you have done for me. Amen. And y'all could either you guys can sit over here or go back with your parents. Either is fine. Please bow your heads. Lord God, please follow all the words that come out of our mouths today to be inspired by you. We pray that as we go into the world, our actions mimic the life of our son, Jesus Christ. We pray that desires of our heart line up with the desires of your heart. And we pray that the words come out of our mouths, lift others up and not tear them down. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to be doing the first lesson. Matthew 6, 31 through 33. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The word of the Lord.
Good morning. My name is Keaton Code, and I will be reading the second lesson, Luke chapter, thir- chapter 16, verses 8 through 13. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness, for the sons of the world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, and I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth, so then when it fails, you may receive into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in very much, and one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in which that is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy
Good morning. I am Boyd Bickerstaff and I'm a junior at Columbus High. How should Christians view YOLO? The acronym that stands for You Only Live Once. You know what? For breakfast I'm going to eat chips and chocolate. YOLO! Or instead of studying for that test, I'm going to go out and have fun with my friends. YOLO! Although these sound like something I would definitely do, it's not what God wants us to do by making the most out of our lives. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. We should enjoy the blessings of life that God has given us and live the most through Him. We must not focus on the things that are un not important, but on the things that, has, that God has put in our life for a purpose. Yolo should motivate us to take the most the yellow should motivate us to take the most out of things that matter and not the unimportant details. Solomon said, The conclusion when all has been heard is, Fear God and keep His commandments, because this applies to every person. Because God saved us, we will follow His ways so we can be saved. He died on the cross for us, giving up His life, even when, when He knew we would disobey Him, knowing that we would be sinful towards Him. He knew that we would ignore His ways and make our own path instead of taking His. Because He died for us, we should live the most out of our life, following Him and obeying His ways. Because God is always faithful to us, we should be faithful in Him. God has given us opportunities that sometimes we must take. Some of the opportunities given to us may be out of our comfort zone. I have experienced something like this. I was with the youth as an eighth grader at a volunteer trip called One Block, One Vision. Many churches from the same area in Columbus came together to spread God's love by doing mission work around our community. Each person got to pick what they wanted to do for the weekend. Some people chose yard work or going to a nursing home or just cleaning up around the area. I chose to spread God's word by simply going around Columbus and talking to people who might need it and asking to pray with them. For the start of our day, for the start of our day, we prayed together and our leader led us in worship in a quick lesson. He told us to pray and to ask God to send us someone that we could see that day and to ask God to speak to us through that person. At first, I was thinking to myself, there is no way that this is going to work. Pray about someone and wait for God to put some random boy in my head? Our leader talked about his stories and I thought it was so amazing what God did for him and how incredible things like that can work out. I wanted that experience in that story, so I prayed, and I prayed, hoping that someone would come to my head. I had a few thoughts, but they weren't really speaking to me like they should have. Finally, something came to my head, a little boy wearing a red shirt, red sneakers, and a gold necklace. I knew this boy was the one I was going to see. We, did, we decided to go to some apartments and play with the kids and bring them water and sa sandwiches. The whole ride over to the apartments, I was so nervous. I knew, that my, I knew that God was speaking to me and wanted me to do this, but was this too out of my comfort zone? Was I sure that I wanted to do this, basically walk up to a boy I had never met and ask to pray with him? But why would I turn this down, right? We arrived and we had been there for a few hours and I still hadn't seen the boy yet. I was starting to get frustrated and a little anxious. Finally, my friend came running down the sidewalk, screaming that he had seen my boy. There he was red shirt, red shoes, and a gold necklace. I was so shocked. I walked up to the boy and started a conversation. He had never really talked about God before and didn't know much about him. I asked if I could pray with him, and I told him how amazing God really was. After I finished, I knew what I had done for that boy. He had a light shining off of his face, and I knew that I had done something good. God not only gives you amazing chances, but he puts people in your life for a reason. A few weeks ago, Reverend Danny talked about the difference between an apostle and a disciple. An apostle is someone who goes out and spread, spreads God's word, and a disciple is someone who is a follower of, of a leader. After listening to Reverend Danny's sermon that day, I knew not only was I a disciple, but I was an apostle for, a boy, for, that, for God and for that little boy. People may be put in our life, and we may not know why and what it will do for us, but God has a reason and is putting that person in front of you at exactly the right time. Use what God gives you to make a new friend or to make someone smile. God gives you these chances, sometimes with people and sometimes with opportunities. Be that apostle and trust God and what he's going to do for you. 
In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 6. Acknowledge what he does for you. He's going to put you on the right path and will lead you, to, lead you to something amazing. I knew that God was giving me an amazing opportunity. I took my chances and trusted that he would send me in the right direction. Take those chances God gives you. Reach out to the people you would never thought to talk to. Listen to God. Trust him as your father, because in the end, it is something you won't regret. Good morning. My name is Katherine Livingston, and I am a sophomore at Columbus High School. When I was in middle school, High School Musical was one of my favorite movies. I watched it over and over again, and I had the soundtrack on repeat on my iPod. High School Musical and other similar movies preach to kids my age that you only live once, and that you should grab a hold of exciting opportunities as they come your way. If you do this, your life will be full of singing and dancing. I really like my school, but my high school experience hasn't turned out to resemble High School Musical that much. As I look around at my classmates and my friends, I see that many of us are struggling with stress and anxiety. For some of us, it is all focused on grades. We compete on GPAs, class ranks, and the types of college letters we begin receiving as early as ninth grade. For others of us, we compete on the athletic fields. Do we make the starting lineup? Do we play varsity? Are we named to the Bi-City Athletes of the Year list? And for others still, social pressures cause great stress. Do we fit in? What kind of car do we drive? Where do we buy our clothes? We are not alone in this. In 2017, a research group from Columbia University found that depression rates were increasing in the United States. They estimated that 1.9 million more people in, the, in America are experiencing dep clinical depression now than just 10 years ago. The study also found that the highest rate of increase was among children and teenagers ages 12 to 17. I believe that stress students feel pl plays a significant role in this increase. In high, in high school, it seems that perfection is the standard we are all operating under. And with this as our standard, we all fall short. That's why Matthew chapter six is ultimately so important for us. Jesus states in verses 31 through 34, so do not worry saying, what shall I eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I have read these verses several times, and I have to admit, I find them very confusing. They seem to contradict much of the teaching that I have received in my life. Work hard, be responsible, strive to meet your full potential. Don't put off until tomorrow what you can complete today. We all know that food does not just appear on our tables or clothes appear in our closets. Our parents and increasingly we ourselves have to work and plan for these material necessities. And we all know that saying that little prayer before a test we didn't study for rarely has good consequences. So what is it that Jesus is telling us? Is he allowing us to goof off and forget about the future? I don't think so. I think we are being reminded that we cannot let earthly needs and desires take over our lives. Because when they do, we neglect God and we neglect ourselves. Doing well in school is a good thing, as is training hard and, and excelling in sports. Having friends and feeling confident socially are also very good things. But it seems that we have taken them too far. We have made false idols out of success and popularity and we end up worshiping these idols in ways that cause us pain. Jesus instructs us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
For us today, this means that we do not have to struggle and fight so much that we make ourselves sick. The important moments of life are not always set off into the future. The present is not just a training ground for what is to come. Instead, we can slow down, laugh with our friends, sign up for classes that interest us, and go on vacation with our family without worrying about a few missed practices. And yes, we can even sing and dance in the halls. God has given us this one life to live in his image, and we must live that life fully. By doing so, we will take care of ourselves spiritually and heal ourselves emotionally along the way. I ask for God's help for myself and for all of us as we try to uphold his will and vision for our lives. Hello, I'm Amy Van Dorn, a junior at Columbus High School, and I must admit I was pretty surprised that we chose YOLO for our theme for Youth Sunday this year. But I was interested to see how we would translate the message to our lives. Once I started hearing the other youth perspectives on YOLO, I realized that YOLO not only provides an inspiring message for certain moments, but an important guiding light, one that we can follow in order to live our best lives. A few months ago, we helped a woman named Mahalia, an elderly woman who lost her son a few years ago. We all came together as one and helped clean out her house, teaching us the value of teamwork and also kindness, and how much we can truly do if we put our minds to it. Mahalia inspired us, and as a result, she's changed our lives. She's changed the future. When I started researching different ways that YOLO can be seen in the real world, I stumbled upon a story about another woman named Mahalia. This Mahalia was Mahalia Jackson, a very, very famous singer from the 1960s, an important part of the civil rights movement. During the March on Washington, Martin Luther King Jr. gave a speech that many of us remember today and have drawn inspiration from. But that speech wouldn't have been so powerful if it wasn't for Mahalia. A few minutes in, she recognized that MLK's speech wasn't necessarily conveying his true emotion, so she yelled out into the crowd. She yelled, tell him about the dream, Martin. And that's when he started using the powerful phrase, I have a dream. If it weren't for Mahalia, that speech wouldn't have been the I have a dream speech, which has changed so many lives for the better. That moment when she yelled, tell him about the dream, she embodied what YOLO should stand for. You only live once should give us the courage to speak up and do what we believe in. This courage from the saying YOLO was given to us by God, as evident in Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, for the Lord our God is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. We are given courage by God to speak up and do, and when we do, we will always have the love of the Lord. Following in the example of Mahalia, we can make such amazing change if we just stand up and do what we believe in in the moments that count. Not only does YOLO give us courage in certain moments, but it can also change your outlook on life. You only live once. You only live once. What are you going to do with that one life? When you think about it, YOLO makes us question our intentions and then our actions. It makes you want to go out and help and maybe in the process, enact some positive change. Sometimes YOLO can inspire people after tragedies. The Parkland shooting made many students realize that life was fleeting and they wanted to do something special with that one life. It gave them courage to speak on a national stage that can be horrifying to many people. They're able to express their opinions and do what they believe in because they were given the courage to stand up and try to make change. They've created lasting moments. And when I remember YOLO, I try to recognize that everyone around me deserves goodness and not just teen angst. So instead of maybe going on my phone, I'll look up and give some smiles in the hope that maybe I'll lift someone's spirits. And with that thought, my own spirits are lifted. YOLO can be about one instance of courage that allows you to enact change, whether it be being able to speak up, for something you believe in, to creating beautiful and lasting moments that can inspire people of all races and creeds. Good morning. There's a saying, there's your plan and then there's God's plan. God's plans are confusing and unclear, 
but they always involve someone that believes in him carrying out his word. Even if something seems spontaneous, like deciding to ask about a dream, it is the product of God's influence. Every opportunity God gave you is an opportunity to act in his name. He gives you the chance to change the life of a young boy, the chance to change the way someone sees the world. So the next time you're faced with the chance to serve God, remember God gave you that chance. You are God's followers, you are God's children. Christians have had an effect on the world throughout time, not by completing earthly goals, but by acting in his name to complete his immortal goals. Remember that you only live once. You only have one chance to serve God, and you only have one chance to do so in a worthwhile way. Will you buckle under society's pressure or stand tall as you live under God's standards? How will you take the time that you have to help people? If this was your only chance to make a difference in the world, would you do it any differently? We are here to spread God's message, not just with our words, but with our actions. You only live once. You have to make sure it counts. Please stand and join me in reciting the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He had descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Church, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to be present in your house today. Lord God, please be with each and every one of us as we go out today into the world. Pastor Danny posed a great question several weeks ago when he asked what would happen if the church doors closed. This got me thinking. While it would be devastating, there would be a shining light in all of it. The shining light that you will still be with us and your ministry will not stop. Our circumstances do not dictate, dictate your love or compassion. The Youth Group of First Presbyterian Church knows what it means to show your love, not only inside this church, but within our community. As we go out, we know that you are with us and not against us. We know that even in bad times, when things are not going as planned, we know that you are with us and this is to be celebrated. We know that even in good times, when everything seems to be going right in our lives, we know that you are with us. Let us pray together in the name of Jesus Christ as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us as we, as we collect our tithes and offerings.
Please bow your heads. As we offer our gifts to you, holy God, may we remember those who are forgotten by us too many times, the hungry, the lonely, the homeless, the vulnerable, yet our important citizens in your kingdom of grace, justice, and hope. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As you go out into the world today, go out. Remember that you only live once. Remember that you only have one life to live. Remember that God is always with you and will never forsake you. Remember to go out and be a witness to your brothers and sisters in Christ, those whom are familiar and unfamiliar. Remember this in all things you do. Alleluia. Amen.